welcome to my first YouTube tutorial ever. I um, just installed Hypercam to do this and um, I'm going to be teaching you about processing today. And um, Okay, so first thing I'm actually going to do is um, go to the processing.org website, go to um, the download section first of all and download processing. And um, you can download processing um, on this page. Um, there's actually a direct link to it which I can um, stick in my comment as well but you'll probably want to have a look at the processing.org um, website um, so then you'll want to be choosing between if you want to get it without Java or get it with Java if you haven't downloaded the JDK already I'd suggest doing that because it allows you to do stuff in the console I've just reinstalled the um, operating system on this computer so I can't actually show you the Java compiler because it's not installed. Um, so what I'll have to do is download it as well for the next tutorial. And um, we won't be using it in the next tutorial, so um, I'll download it for when we need it. But um, what you'll probably want to do is download it with Java. So this one here, the one where it says Windows. So if you click on that, it starts to download. It's about 85 to 86 megabytes, depending on what revision you get. Um, the latest revision is actually 85.8 um, megabytes so um, if you want a relatively fast internet connection to be able to download that or relatively stable um, once you've downloaded it um, it should be okay though once you've downloaded it you'll get this folder here so it's uh, just a just a zipped just a zipped folder um, and you'll want to get WinRAR or something similar. Um, you'll get this folder in here, the Processing 1.5.1 folder. What I've done is create another folder on my desktop. I'll just create one for demonstration purposes. And um, I've called it Processing. So I'm going to create another folder called um, Pro. So in the Pro folder, I'm going to put the processing files. And basically, with processing, just by clicking the exe, you're running the program. You don't need to install anything because, well, it's already there and ready to use. So um, I'm just waiting for it to extract. It's relatively fast. It shouldn't take too long. Um, there we go. Done. Okay. So now I've got this pro folder. You can literally go into the folder and then click the processing application. What I've done is created um, a link to it, um, uh, pinned it to the uh, taskbar. So what that means is that it will always be down here for whenever you need to use it. So as long as you keep it to the same, um, keep it in the same directory, you can always have it pinned there. So we get this one and pin that on there. So pin to taskbar, and that means it'll be for easy access. That's assuming you're using Windows 7. Um, if you're using uh, Macs, it's even better for you because you guys have more stability, I'd say. Um, on Windows, it can be a little bit flaky at times. Um, but it's very, very good as a learning tool. And you can do some really cool stuff with it. Um, I, I will show you some of them examples um, in later tutorials, but at the moment, let's just, let's just keep to the basics. Now that we've got uh, processing in a folder, um, what I'm going to do is get you to just uh, click on the uh, processing application, uh, double click it, and then you'll come up with this sketch window here. Now, uh, this is a new sketch that opens already for you. And by clicking new, you can keep going to more and more and more and more and more and more sketches. And actually, when you go up to Z, it tells you to go outside and get some sunshine, or go for a walk, <laughs> which is uh, quite funny. Um, so basically what I'm just going to show you is uh, how processing works at the moment um, why is it so diverse and so good for learning well, basically you get this window which um, if any of you have um, used Arduino if you're doing some sort of uh, engineering course or robotics course or programming uh, physical programming or um, hardware programming then you might have used Java Arduino it's got a similar layout to that um, you can actually do different things with this though. This one's just for um, animation or uh, image manipulation or even sound manipulation this one. It, it makes it a lot easier to make creative sketches I would say. Um, so 
what I'm going to just show you here is all the different options. You've got the standard file selector um, where you can select, uh, create a new file, open a file, check your sketchbook, check examples, um, save files, export an applet, which I'll get into later, export an application. It's got page set up, it's got its preferences, and in the preferences it shows you all the different things um, you can do. If you're looking to do a more memory intensive one, I'd suggest changing the maximum available memory. So I always set mine to like 1000 megabytes. Um, maybe maybe that's too much, I don't know. <laughs> but um, that means I don't usually run out of memory. And you can set up to, you can set up quite high, but sometimes it will tell you your memory allowance is too high. So you want to be careful about that. Um, and uh, you've got your um, edit tab where you can cut, copy, paste, select, auto format, comment or uncomment, you can increase indentation, decrease indentation and the auto format feature here is the most useful. So let's for, say for example I'm going to draw a sketch, let's create something really simple. This is a basic sketch, let me actually just quickly increase the font size here. Um, that's in preferences, isn't it? Font size, let's create set that to 18. Might be a bit big. No, that's fine. So, void setup here, okay. So, you've got void setup and void draw, which I'm going to go on about in the next tutorial, which hopefully should help you. If you see here, um, I'm going to create something. So, I'm going to go size, let's make it a 400 by 400 box. So, I've drawn a 400 by 400 box just with the size command. That basically sets you up a new um, window and your um, draw function allows you to draw anything you want so what I'm going to do is an ellipse uh, create a new variable as well in I and then um, let's just set that up here I equals zero I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting here and um, let's go 40 let's go 40 now let's go I, 40, let's go I, height divided by 2, um, 50, 50. Okay, so now I've got an ellipse here. I've specified its x, uh, its x coordinate, y coordinate, and width and height. Um, so what, what should happen here is it will draw it at um, x, um, the coordinate of x, 0, and the coordinate of y, height divided by 2. So it'll be halfway down the screen, and it will be in uh, on this side of the screen. So I'll draw that now. You see, I've got an ellipse here. Okay. So I'm just going to increase the size of that a bit. Let's do 100. And what the other thing you can do is increment i, for example. So i plus plus, for example, would add one to i every time. So i plus 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 will add one to i every time. So by doing this, it goes along the screen. And as you can see, it's leaving a trail behind. So the good thing about processing is that you can put a background in um, with processing. And it, what this will do, it will refresh the background before running any, any code again. So essentially what draw is doing, it, it continues running. The draw would continue running. Whereas setups run once to put in the initial settings. So where you've got size here, it's only going to run that once to set the size. Where you've got i equals zero here, it sets i to zero once. That's in the setup function here. Anything within um, anything within this is um, anything like this is a function. So if I was to write void beans, you'd have yourself a function there and you'll be able to change anything you want with that. Okay, so, so far what we've got is these different functions. But the main ones we're going to be looking at, I'm just going to get rid of that, is void setup and void draw. Now it's now that it's set up, it's oops, going to ask me to put in a color, I forgot about that, sorry. You need to put in a color when you put in a background. And color values are shown here, you've got a color selector. If you can see the R, R G and B here, um, red value at the moment is 255, green value is 255, blue value is 255. So we're moving up and down, these values change. What this is, is the RGB color value. Um, you've probably heard about that before. You'll hear about it in Photoshop when you're changing the color. It'll have an RGB value or um, most other programming languages. 
um, I should say most other high level programming languages. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is just make the backgrounds 255, 255, 255 which if I can show you makes the background white and the ellipse already um, has an outline so you can see the ellipse is just moving across the screen now so this this is just a basic introduction to it so the reason why I've done all of this is um, just to show you how diverse it can be I've typed in a few lines of code and I've created this circle here going across the screen which although it doesn't look like much but if you did that in Java it would be a good page of code at least um, so what I'm going to do now is just show you that auto format feature so if you, if you highlight it all you can use control A or um, you can just highlight it manually um, so I'm going to highlight it all and you go to um, edit and then auto format you click on auto format and it will change all the formatting for you to make it easier to read and that will really help you when you're trying to learn so if, some, if something gets confusing and you've been messing about the code so much that you've lost where you are just control A and then auto, um, edit auto format or control A control T control A control T and that um, will auto format it for you easy okay so that, that's a quick introduction to uh, processing hopefully this has helped you to um, get your head round uh, the layout of processing and um, what you can do with it um, I'd really suggest checking out processing.org because they've got so many tutorials on there they've got a forum on there as well if you get stuck with something and there's usually a lot of people on there willing to um, help you out I've actually uh, posted something on here myself so um, that's bye for me from this tutorial and um, I wish you good luck uh, playing around with it